Hello, this is David Montiel. I'm a staff scientist for the PRISM Center at the University of Michigan. I would like to thank the organizers of this conference as well as everyone who is watching. The title of my presentation is The PRISM's BF Open Source High Performance Framework for Phase Field Modeling and its Application to Simulating 3D Microstructure Dynamics. And my goal today is to give you an overview of the PRISM's Phase Field Framework developed at the PRISM Center, including discussing performance, applications, in particular to simulate 3D systems, and integration with other computational packages. I would like to start by thanking the Department of Energy for funding, and NSERC, Exceed, and the Advanced Research Computing at the University of Michigan for computational resources. I also want to thank some people who have been involved in the development of features or applications of PRISMS BF that I am going to mention today starting with Professor John Allison, who is the director of the PRISM Center, Yanjun Liu, who performed simulations for microgalvanic corrosion, Zhang Jie Yao, who led the development of a new alloy solidification application, Kubra Karayajis, who was involved in the ongoing development of the implicit solver functionality, and finally, Nicole Schumann and Susan Gentry at UC Davis, who worked on a recent update for the PRISM's PF NanoHub module. Okay, so before I get into PRISM's BF, I would like to have a brief overview of the PRISM Center Integrated Framework, which has the goal of enabling accelerated predictive material science as part of the Materials Genome Initiative. The approach is to establish a framework comprised of multi-scaled open source software, along with experiments, integration protocols, and the Materials Commons Information Repository, which facilitates data sharing and collaboration. As you can see, phase field simulations are central to this framework, since they require thermodynamic and kinetic data that experiments or atomistic models can provide. And we use them to predict microstructure evolution, which in turn can be useful for experiments and other computational tools, such as crystal plasticity finite element. Okay, let's talk about the motivation behind the development of PRISMS BF. Phase field models have a wide range of applications in simulating microstructure phenomena. I am just showing a few examples here. For this reason, there isn't really a typical governing equation for all phase field models. Instead, the governing equations need to be selected on a case-by-case -case basis, depending on the physics we want to describe. As a consequence, we have a large variety of formulations and terms. So a challenge for a phase field framework is that it needs to be flexible enough to incorporate different governing equations. Another challenge is that simulating a large physically representative system is almost always computationally intensive, typically requiring tens or thousands of cores. Because of this, many studies are often done in 2D, but accurate simulations in three dimensions require strong computational performance. This is why it is essential to have a scalable, high-performance framework to perform 3D simulations of complex microstructures. Given these challenges, the PRISMS PF framework was designed under four guiding principles. First, that its computational performance, including parallel scalability, meets or exceeds that of typical phase field codes as well as that of mo the most common open source codes. Second, that it accommodates a wide variety of phase field models and applications. Third, that the interface for creating or modifying governing equations is simple, quick, and separate from the numerical implementation. And finally, that it is open source with, with a permissive license so that it is available to everyone and advances can be shared by the community. So let's go over some of the main features and capabilities of Prisons BF. On the upper left corner, we have uh, the link to the website where you can get an overview access to the repository, instruction manual, etc. This code is based on DIL2, which is a finite element library, and some of its advanced capabilities are the use of a matrix free approach, which employs efficient, uh, explicit time stepping by eliminating the need to diagonalize the mass matrix the capability to solve for an arbitrary number of coupled partial differential equations, the option to use linear, quadratic, or cubic elements, multi-level parallelism, that is distributed memory parallelization, 
task-based threading and vectorization. So from the perspective of the user, this all happens in the background. And all the user needs to do is set the number of NPI processes at runtime. They use of adaptive meshing, which is very useful when we have regions in space, such as interfaces, where a high resolution is required, along with regions where fields vary slowly, typically bulk phases that don't need to be resolved as much. Next, we have a method for explicit nucleation placement based on a nucleation probability function that the user can define, a functionality for grain remapping, which can significantly reduce the computation time in grain growth simulations by assigning a small number of order parameters to track all grains in the system. And a recently added capability is the Newton Picard solver, which allows us to solve nonlinear ordinary differential equations at every time step. So an example of this would be uh, solving the for the equilibrium electrostatic potential as the system evolves. And on the right panel, we have some of the functionalities and features that make it user friendly, including a simple interface, which means the typical user only needs to modify a few files in an application directory, and it is relatively straightforward to do so. Um, a detailed online user guide, a total of 27 built-in applications, a simple Docker-based installation option, a recently upgrading NanoHub tool for educational use, integration with the Materials Commons repository for easy uh, data sharing, a new suite of post-processing scripts for results analysis, and a new series of short video uh, tutorials on YouTube, which we plan to keep expanding. I also want to point out this reference to an article that we published about a year ago where you can find a lot more details about the framework structure, features, performance, etc. Here, I just want to give a brief overview of the structure of Prisons PF. We have the core library, which is the backend part that performs all of the operations such as generating the mesh, applying the boundary conditions, applying initial conditions, and doing the calculations at every time step. It is designed so that a typical user will not have to interact with it. Then we have applications. Each application has a directory that contains a file to import parameters and simulation settings, as well as a few other files where the user can set the governing equations, boundary conditions, initial conditions, and post-processing expressions. This was designed so that no prior C++ knowledge is required to use an application, and only minimal C++ knowledge is required to create a new application. Moving on to tests, we have a suite of unit and regression tests as well as continuous integration with Travis CI. The purpose of these tests is to ensure that Prisons PF continues to work properly as new features are added. And finally, we have post-processing scripts, which are Python scripts for data analysis using the visit CLI. And I will come back to the scripts a little later. Let's talk about performance. As you might remember, uh, one of our guiding principles for development was that Prisons PF computational performance meets or exceeds that of typical phase field codes and the most common open source codes as well. So first I want to show a comparison with a finite difference code. This code was written in Fortran with MPI parallelization, uses second order central difference derivatives and explicit time stepping. We use this code to simulate a simple scenario of two particles growing in a 3D system according to coupled Kahn-Hilliard Allen Kahn dynamics. We ran the same simulation in Prisons BF and compare the results with finite difference for the same error. This is with respect to a highly resolved simulation in time and in space. In this table, you can see the comparison. If we use Prisons BF with linear elements and uniform mesh, Finer difference is much faster, but once we get to quadratic mesh, the performance is comparable, although finer difference is still a little faster than Prisons PF. However, once we go to adaptive mesh and cubic elements, Prisons PF is more than tenfold faster. Now, regarding other open source codes, we compare the performance between Prisons PF, Moose, FiPi, and AMPE for a 2D simulation of solidification in a pure material. This is one of the benchmark problems developed at the PF Hub community. You can see here the link to the problem. 
And in summary, we found that the Prism's PF calculation requires three orders of magnitude fewer normalized core hours than AMPE and PHIPI, while having similar or lower degree of error. The fastest calculation using Prism's PF and Moose have similar computational cost and tip velocity error. Um, and I should add that for this comparison, we only included results uploaded by expert level users. So in conclusion, we are pretty confident that Prism's PF is competitive in terms of performance. Now I want to show you a few applications that showcase the versatility of Prism's PF to simulate three-dimensional microstructures, starting from spinodal decomposition and coarsening on the top left, um, interaction between magnesium and neodymium precipitates. Uh, this figure shows a pretty good agreement with experiments in terms of morphology and relative orientation between the precipitates. Then on the bottom left, we see particles featuring strong interfacial anisotropy after they have evolved from an initially spherical shape. The reason they have different shapes is because each particle has a different form of the anisotropy function. And the bottom right, we see an animation of grain growth. And this application uses the grain reassignment method, which allows us to describe a large number of grains with only a few order parameters. Moving on to more recent applications, we have a new application for solidification of binary alloys. This application is based on the solidification model of Echeverria and collaborators, which introduces an anti-trapping term to correct for spurious effects that arise from using an artificially large interface width. By these, I mean considerably larger than the physical width of a typical solid liquid interface. As with many other phase field models, the free energy contains a gradient energy term and a double well term. In addition, we have a third term uh, which is labeled here FAB, which accounts for the concentration and temperature dependent correction of the double well according to the phase diagram. And below, we are showing movies of 3D simulation results obtained with this application. On the left side, we have one for equiax solidification, uh, where the temperature is uniform, and one for directional solidification, uh, where we have a temperature gradient along the horizontal direction. Another recent application is the study of microgalvanic effects in corrosion. To study this, we employ a phase field and smooth boundary methods to simulate the evolution of a metal electrolyte interface during corrosion. The numerical solution of the model requires solving partial differential equations for the order parameter, which describes the metal, or we can use multiple order parameters for a polycrystal, uh, then we have the domain parameter, which describes the electrolyte and marks the region where ionic transport is allowed. Concentrations of each of the ionic species in the electrolyte, which are governed by the combination of diffusion and migration. Reaction current at the interface, which depends on the value of the electrostatic potential at that interface. And finally, the electrostatic potential, for which we need the nonlinear solver. And on the right hand of the slide, I'm showing a movie of a simulation where starting from a surface exposed to an electrolyte, we have a cylindrical iron particle embedded in a magnesium matrix. As you can see in this movie, since magnesium and iron have different corrosion potentials, we see a microgalvanic effect where the magnesium acts as an anode and iron as, as a cathode. As a consequence, magnesium metal dissolves into the electrolyte at a faster rate in the region that is closest to the iron particle. Now I want to move on to some of the most recent features of PRISM's PF, and I will discuss some of these in the upcoming slides. First, the Newton Picard solver, which I previously mentioned. We also have three new applications, one for corrosion, one for alloy solidification, and one for spinel decomposition. Um, a series of video tutorials, some updated and new integration tools, a recently revamped NanoHub tool, and a new phase field community of practice within Materials Commons for sharing simulation results. One of the developments I just mentioned is a series of tutorial videos that are available in the PRISM Center YouTube channel. 
I will post the link at the end of the presentation, but it's also quite easy to search for it. Uh, and we have uploaded four videos so, so far, one for installing Prisons PF, running a pre-built application and visualizing the results. Another one with a step-by-step -step guide to the installation of prerequisites, namely deal two with the MPI and P4S dependencies and visualization software packages, either visit or power review. Another one in which we create a simple new application to simulate the evolution of a circular seed near its critical size. In this example, we go through each of the application files and edit them accordingly. And finally, one that showcases phase operation following spinodal decomposition. We plan to increase adding new tutorial videos, which will have examples on how to create new applications of increasing complexity with the goal of familiarizing users with different features of the framework. Very briefly, I would like to talk about a NanoHub application based on Prisons PF. You can access this via the link shown at the top of the slide. This application calculates the 2D equilibrium shape of a precipitate, taking into account the effects of anisotropy in interfacial and strain energies. It is targeted for classroom use, and the idea is that students can understand the effect of each of the parameters by setting different combinations of values. It was recently optimized to include a low fidelity option, which produces a faster preliminary calculation. And here are some of our recent efforts towards integrating Prisons PF with other computational tools. First, we have a recently upgraded script to import microstructures from Dream 3D using the visit CLI. This feature is very useful for brain growth simulations. We have new post-processing scripts that take the output file from Prisons PF simulations and automatically calculate useful properties like phase fraction, interface area, or interface length in 2D, and domain count. We have plans to continuously add new scripts that meet the most common needs for users. Finally, the newly developed CLI from Materials Commons will facilitate creating scripts to automate the creation of projects, upload simulation results, create and publish datasets, and edit communities of practice. Finally, I want to briefly talk about the community support for Prisons VF. We have an online user manual that is continuously being updated, an online message board which has over 100 registered members, and where users can ask for help with specific issues. And we also recently created a community of practice with the goal of facilitating users to share phase field simulation results in the form of datasets. Some of the ongoing and future development plans include new applications. Uh, then for performance improvement, we will continue the development of an implicit solver option. Uh, we plan to have an adaptive time functionality, an option to implement non-zero Neumann boundary conditions, and to implement GPU acceleration capability. And then for integration and ease of use, we will build an integration tool with Thermocalc for direct access to databases that contain thermodynamic and kinetic information. And we will also create an integration tool for loading free energy surfaces from CASM, which is another PRISMS framework. With that, I will conclude this presentation. Here are some links and contact information that may be helpful if you are interested in PRISMS PF, either as a user or as a developer. Thank you for watching.